Welcome back my fellow ant hunters and keepers. I am the Colonialist and in this week's episode we're going to be discussing Lazius Niger nuptial flights. On the 23rd of the 6th 2020 in northwest London I happened to stumble across an early flight from Lazius Niger. This is a local colony to me which I discovered when we moved into that flat in 1999. Now I don't live there anymore but my mum does. I came out of the house and I saw this queen ant just running along the ground and I knew that there was a super colony of Lazius Niger nearby. This is a large colony, it's well established and every year has always provided me queens. So I grabbed a jar from my mum's kitchen and I collected up as many of these queens as I possibly could in the short amount of time that I had. I got them home and I thought, you know, this will be a fantastic opportunity to show you how to make a test tube set up. First things first, you're going to need either a cotton pad or cotton balls, whichever one you prefer. If you've got the pad, what I like to do is just to roll it up and cut it in half. That gives me the perfect amount of cotton that I need to create the test tube setup. If you've got a cotton ball, then you might need to pull some off or just size it so that it's correct for the test tubes that you have. Now I'm using smaller test tubes than normal. I have the 12 by 100 test tubes. They're a little bit smaller, but I find Lazius Niger and the smaller species of ant prefer these tubes because they're not too big for them and they're just happier that way. My own personal preference, it, it's not written in stone. It's up to you on how you do it. So what you need to do is take some bottled water and fill up the test tube just like this. I've had people ask me, can I use tap water? You can, depending on where you're from and how clean your water source is. It's primarily the fluoride content as to why people use bottled water versus tap water and how it affects the ants. With the test tube now filled with water, what you want to do is to stuff the cotton into the tube and then use a tool to stuff it down with. Personally, I've got a metal chopstick and for me it is the perfect tool. So I've hijacked this chopstick and I've turned it into my ant keeping test tube pokey tool. I have various different tools that I use which I've hijacked from other things. So I believe the next tool I'm about to show you comes from a makeup set for dealing with blackheads. Yes, you're going to laugh, but you will be amazed at what makeup stuff can be repurposed as ant tools to perfection. So this tool has a little hook on it. Now I've spoken to many people who say they have trouble getting the cotton out of test tubes. You know, it's either dried up and you want to reuse it and they stuff down the chopstick and they're trying to pull it out and it doesn't work. Now this little hooked tool, so you know, search up on eBay, Amazon, ask your missus like I did and you, you'll be able to find these tools. Now this one has a little hook Simply put it in, hook the cotton, pull it out. Could not be more simple. I mean, honestly, it, it just works. It's, it's, it's perfect. So that's my little pro tip. That's what I do. I have all my tools prepped when I am making test tubes. So as you can see in the background, you know, I've got the little uh, tools that I was talking about for dealing with blackheads. I've got the tweezers, the scissors, and the chopstick. So I've got my pokey, I can pull it out if I need to using the other tool. I've got the scissors to cut up the cotton pads. All my tools are sitting there ready to go and ready to be used. It just makes life simpler when you are prepared, especially when you're dealing with transferring live creatures into a new setup because you want everything ready just in case. So by now, hopefully you know how to make a test tube setup. And the reason that we make test tube setups is we are creating a synthetic claustral founding chamber. Now, what is a claustral founding chamber? Well, in the wild, a queen newly mated will run along, she'll find somewhere nice and damp to dig into. And in that chamber that she creates, she will found the colony. Pro tip from an experienced keeper. People who have um, claustral queens will often feed them. Now they don't need to feed until they have their first workers. But just remember over this time, they are slowly starving to death. So what experienced keepers like to do is to give them a bit of a nutrient boost. So this allows them to feed their nanditics so you get a stronger first generation. 
you have a stronger queen because she's no longer slowly starving to death liquidating the muscles on her back which were her wing muscles she liquidates them into a soup which she feeds the larvae by giving her like a fruit fly or some honey water you're making sure that your queen is stronger you're making sure that she's going to be able to survive giving your queen the strongest possible chance of founding a healthy colony now nuptial flights are still going on throughout the country they can be going on until as late as September. Lazius and Niger are known for having one of the largest nuptial flights. Their flight is actually tracked from space so if you go onto Google and check this out you'll find many articles every year of them actually being tracked by satellite in space. So the largest flight has not happened yet. They've been flying early due to the uh, unusual hot weather that we've been having. They've been flying primarily down in the south and southeast of the United Kingdom so if you're in the Midlands or you're up north, many people have not been reporting Lazius Niger flights yet. So how do you go about discovering the best chance to catch a queen during a nuptial flight? The first thing you need to do is to go out into the wild, your local forests, your local parks, and if you're incredibly lucky, even your own back garden, if you have one. Have a look for nests and see what you can find. If they are widening the nest entrances or perhaps you'll even see a load of unmated elates. So that will be the princes and princesses. Um, the males will die off quite quickly. So do not capture the males, only the queens that you're interested in. Now, the best thing about Lazius and Niger is they chew off their wings pretty quickly after being mated. So usually straight after the nuptial flight, you will find queens running around on the ground without wings and that is the best sign so if you're specifically going for lazius niger or a lazius species that is what you will find they will chew the wings off and the queens will be running around on the ground they're quite easy to spot they're nicely shaped and they're quite easy to capture so make sure that you've got the tools on you to capture them whether it's a tupperware container a glass jar or if you already have your test tubes prepared now that's something i usually do if i'm going out queen hunting looking at the nuptial flights and hoping to capture queens i do take the test tubes with me i just happen to be caught off guard and the best thing that i could get was a glass jar and that's fine if if you're only going to have them in the jar or container until you get home and then you're going to move them over don't worry about it that's fine many people do capture them this way if you wish you can put in a bit of damp tissue this just helps sustain them makes them feel a little bit more comfortable that they're in a damp area and they'll be happy until you get home so this brings me to the end of the episode i hope you enjoy this wild colony that i found while chopping up some wood at work this wild colony is lazius emarginatus i hope that i pronounced that correctly it's a very interesting species it's not supposed to be found in hertfordshire where i found it um so i was very pleased to find it i have found three colonies locally and i saved this colony from going on the fire as they were nesting in the firewood that I chopped up at work. As always, if you enjoyed the episode, please drop me a like and in the comments, let me know how your queen hunting is going. Have you captured any queens? What species have you captured? And more importantly, where have you captured them to help out everyone else in their hunt for queens this nuptial season or queen catching season as I like to call it. So remember some species will be flying as late as October but the primary dates are between June and September. Thank you very much for staying with me throughout the whole episode. Until the next episode I'll catch you then. See you later. Take care and all the best. This is The Colonialist signing out.